What's up? So today I want to talk about a fun, fun aspect of anxiety that I struggled with and a lot of you are struggling with it as well. And I'm just going to call it creating your own anxiety symptoms. Now I'm not talking about the ones that happen on a subconscious level. I, I get it. We have symptoms kind of no matter what. Sometimes that can be on autopilot. They're chronic. Uh, the ones that are there right after we wake up and they stay there until we fall asleep if we're lucky enough to do that. I'm not talking about the symptoms that randomly pop up. You know how we have ever-changing symptoms. It's like just whenever we think we get past one thing, another thing pops up. I'm talking about creating symptoms and creating symptoms very quickly, even within a few seconds after hearing about them, reading about them, seeing some media, right, that has them in there. And I'll, I'll go dive into each of these things or just anticipating symptoms. Maybe they were symptoms that you had before and you're worried about them popping up uh, within a few seconds or in this certain situation and sure enough that happens. That's how powerful the brain is and anticipatory anxiety really makes things very difficult when it comes to recovering from anxiety. It's so hard to not worry about a situation or something that's coming up, whether it be going to work or getting in the car or being in a social situation or going to the doctor and they have to check your vitals. It's so hard um, not to worry about something that's coming up in the future. Um, but anyways, we're going to dive into these guys um, reading something. I remember a particular situation where I was reading an article about MS and there's about 10 symptoms and signs and everything. And of course, all these symptoms and signs also can be uh, anxiety. And, and that's the thing about anxiety it can literally cause pretty much any symptom that you can imagine. Um, take heart, heart attacks, for example, chest pain, uh, nausea, left arm pain, numbness, tingling, shortness of breath. So yeah, whenever you see those things and you're having that, especially the first few times and you look it up on Google, you're going to think heart attack, right? And the symptoms are, gonna, are going to, excuse me, intensify. So I was having some twitching. Okay. So I'm looking at this article. I see twitching. The twitching starts to intensify whenever I see like that's a big thing with MS or whatever. And then I see a couple other symptoms and it happened so freaking fast. It blew my, like that should have been a sign right there that this is anxiety. In fact, that should be evidence, guys. We, we're not thinking of it like that because in the moment we're, we're feeling irrational. We're like, oh my God, now I feel this and now I feel that, you know, as you're reading through these Google searches and, and articles. But that should be a telling sign that this is anxiety. A disease isn't going to intensify that fast because you read about it, right? So another thing that I try to tell people, you're not going to catch a disease because you read an article about it, right? Or because you read an article that such and such died at whatever age. You can't catch a disease like that. That's not how it works. Also, usually it takes time for a disease to develop and to progress. So if you're reading something and you feel all these symptoms quickly, it's more likely they're sympathy symptoms. And whenever I say sympathy symptoms, I'm kind of piggybacking off of um, the concept of how men will have sympathy symptoms when their partner is pregnant, right? They'll gain a little bit of weight. I don't know how much truth goes into all that. Um, the weight part makes a lot of sense because if the wife's eating a, a lot of bad stuff, he's probably going to be eating a lot of that bad stuff. So, you know, pack on an extra 10, 15 pounds. So I'm kind of using that term here. It's like you're having sympathy symptoms for people that you see that are going through it or you're having sympathy symptoms from reading the articles, right? So reading articles, Google searches, all that stuff, I could have symptoms extremely, extremely quick. Um, watching things, okay? So movies, TV shows, okay? Um, I used to love things like House, House MD. I used to love ER stories. Um, you know, I'm able to watch Grey's Anatomy and stuff these days with my wife, but I couldn't imagine watching that stuff back then. Um, because I, I tried to watch some of these things in the beginning of my anxiety, not realizing that it would trigger me. But house, for instance, like it could be, there's this weird tumor in the brain that's causing like this person to have seizures. And the minute I hear that, I start to get a pain deep inside my head within a few seconds. All right. Um, I'm trying to remember the movie. It's called Seven Pounds, I believe, with Will Smith. I remember th this movie because um, it was crazy my whole day. Uh, basically was ruined. But a lot of that was my doing because I wasn't responding the right way or getting out of it or being rational or even attempting to be rational. Um, she had, she was having like heart failure and it was something that was progressing over time and she needed a heart transplant. So the minute that I saw that, of course, I was always worrying about my heart. My chest started to hurt, started to ache. I had to like get up and leave the room even though my other friends were in there. I had to like stay outside 
the rest of the movie. Um, God awful. I love the movie now. I can watch it. No problems now. Um, but if you have heart anxiety and you're seeing stuff like that and every other movie, you're going to see somebody like having a heart attack. That's how common it is. So it's going to be common in movies. It's a common way to die, especially if you're older. Um, so it's going to be in the media. It's going to be in the movies. Um, so any TV shows that revolved around health or if I watched a movie and somebody was in distress or having cancer, it wasn't just heart disease. If somebody was having cancer, I'd have sympathy symptoms. So if they were like feeling nauseous and throwing up, I would feel sick to my stomach. Um, if somebody had stomach cancer, if I read about somebody having stomach cancer, my stomach would start to knot up. Um, so that's an example of, of media. So anything that you read, anything that you see through media or TV, um, also <laughs> something else. Um, I remember having um, some pressure on this side of my ear. This is actually my last bout with health anxiety. I started to think that I had lymphoma, but I only thought that I had lymphoma and made this connection whenever I saw a commercial on TV about a medication for people that have, uh, for people that have lymphoma. Okay. And I remember my lymph node being a little swollen and I was like, aha, that's what it is. That's it. Just from seeing that commercial the next year to year and a half, I was convinced that I had uh, like a slow growing lymphoma. Went to the ENTs, had all the stuff, begged for CAT scans, all that good stuff for a year and a half. Thankfully, that was my last bout of health anxiety. But that can just go, to, like that just goes to show you that even something like a, a 20 second commercial can like mess up a year for you if you're not making any attempts to be rational. Like I can't just catch lymphoma from watching a commercial about a lymphoma medication, right? But that's how irrational um, we will be. I was also somebody that could develop symptoms very, very quickly if somebody was in the room talking about either something they were going through or something that a family member or friend was going through. And I know I've mentioned this a couple times, but it's appropriate for this video title. Um, so one of my coworkers, or it was an employee that I was actually over, I was a manager, a general manager, so he needed some time off. And he needed time off because his dad was having heart surgery. He was like, yeah, you know, and he went into all the details. I'm sitting there like, you're just listening and everything. I'm just wanting to like, just how many days do you need off, right? <laughs> but I wanted to be nice and hear him out. I mean, his dad just had a major heart attack and everything. And he's like, yeah, he was only, you know, he's like 46 or 47 years old. I can't remember the exact age, but it was like mid to upper 40s. He's like, so healthy. He would go out there and play basketball with us every day. And he was better than us. And he didn't have any issues with his weight and all this stuff. I'm like, oh my God, like, oh my God, if it could happen to him, it could happen to me. Like, you know, so I started to actually have chest pain while he was talking. Luckily, I was able to kind of hold it together until, you know, he was able to leave and I got the days that he needed off. But after that, I had an adrenaline rush right after he left. I had to go out to the floor because we were having a big shoe sale. It was a sporting goods store. And I was out there talking to a customer and in the middle of everything, you know, whenever this adrenaline comes out, you kind of have like these like moments of like either DPDR or disassociate, I don't know what it was. Um, but I would just stood there, couldn't concentrate. It's almost like I didn't hear anything the lady was saying as far as like asking for a size for a shoe. I, this is very unprofessional, but I'm sorry. Anxiety will make you do things like this. I just turned around, walked to the back and I just had to ask my assistant manager to go handle the situation. I said, I got to go to the hospital. I don't feel good. And I could have sworn I was going to have a heart attack. So I went and spent you know, I got a, well, I didn't spend, luckily I didn't have to actually pay this bill, but it was like $3,500 to get some testing done and to go to this hospital and everything. This, the hospital, long story short, hospital actually shut down. So I never actually had to, to cover that bill. Um, but that's an example of hearing, hearing stuff. So if you're dealing with this kind of stuff, you are not losing your mind. You are not crazy. And of course, anticipating symptoms, talked about that. You can worry about your chest hurting and then it can happen just like that. You can worry about your chest tightening up and it can happen just like that. I, your brain is this powerful. My brain was this powerful. I could send stuff. I could be like, man, I hope my arm doesn't get numb, numb. That's how automatic my anxiety was. It took very little effort to send signals to various parts. And that's why I think it was so difficult for me to get out of it. And I think it's a reason why a lot of you are struggling. So if you're struggling with this, you're not alone. Um, if you do want more help with your anxiety recovery, guys, check out my course, Elite Anxiety Bootcamp. I'm gonna read you a review real quick. Ellen says, Elite Anxiety Boot Camp was the missing piece in my recovery. The second day of working on the course, that heaviness feeling that comes with health anxiety lifted from me because I was finally doing something concrete to work towards recovery. The course gave me a foundation, tools, and a coach that wasn't going to give up. Trey has been there. He gets it, and he truly cares about your success. 
a lead anxiety boot camp was more than worth it. I still have a lot of work to do, but thanks to this course, I've been symptom free for two weeks after 14 months of non stop symptoms. Thank you, Trey. If you want that extra push, if you want something that's going to kind of take you through the whole entire process and kind of break everything down, that course is going to help you out. And there's going to be a lot of downloadables, a lot of bonus materials with it. Um, the link for that's going to be down below in the description and in the first pinned comment if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching so we can talk on the phone about your personalized uh, situation, right? Everybody's different. Everybody has a different story to tell. So everybody's going to need a different strategy to overcome it. If you're interested in that, my email is down below um, also in the description. And there's a link for online therapy. If you haven't tried to get help through therapy, today's the perfect opportunity to get started with that. Um, a lot of other good stuff down there, guys. I love you all. And until next time, keep fighting.